Chapter 23. The next day, I awoke with renewed determination. Peg assigned me the new ship, a powerful two-seat striker, <clears throat> fully loaded with formidable destructors and twin boosters. It was larger than most ships I'd flown, but should still be maneuverable. It was the best ship in Peg's small fleet. I transferred Embot to it. After some careful digging, I realized they still didn't know he was an AI. They thought I had used remote control to make the ship hover the previous day. I made some modifications he said would insulate his core systems from destructor blasts, then installed a light lance. After that, Chet and I climbed aboard. You sure you don't want your own ship? I asked him as we strapped in. I don't particularly need a co-pilot since, you know, Embot was humming happily. Apparently, he approved of the specs on this new ship. I wouldn't want to try the controls with this wounded arm, Chet said, fitting on a flight helmet. And beyond that, it has been, well, centuries since I've flown. I think perhaps I should like to take this slowly. Fair enough. As we readied ourselves, a small group of broadsiders prepared to escort us, Peg, the Resonance, and Maxim, who unfortunately inherited my weaker ship. In a few short minutes, we'd all launched into the air and started on our way. I immediately felt the joy of flying a real starfighter. It banked at a touch, accelerated or decelerated with ease. At high speeds, I could close my eyes and barely make out the whistle of air outside. Not a single rattle. It felt like forever since I'd had a true top-of-the-line starfighter. What did I tell you? Peg said through the comm. Are you growing Kifos yet? I thought those were the happy ones. At least seven, I said, banking again. I took that ship out myself a few times, Peg said. Never into combat, though. It was just too spectacular to risk damaging it with my clunky flying. But you, you're perfect for it, Spin. Will Guntua, or will Guntua forgive me for taking it? She has been wanting to back off from flying anyway, Peg said. Take a break. Do some ground duty instead. How could anyone grow tired of this? I didn't know Gunta well. She was a hecklo from one of the other flights. But I supposed if she'd wanted to keep flying, she'd have been given what was now Maxim's ship. Peg genuinely seemed to have forg forgiven me, but the others now stepped far more lightly around me. It hurt to see how Shiver made certain never to let her ship stray out in front of mine, as if she worried I'd start shooting again. I couldn't blame them. I would have acted the same way, or likely worse. At least Chet seemed to be enjoying himself. I could call up his camera feed on the corner of my screen. He was looking out the canopy with an almost childlike grin on his face. We soared across several fragments, startling a small herd of something that looked like ostriches, but with their feet on their backs as well as underneath them. Or, but with feet on their backs as well as underneath them. The readout said it would take roughly two hours of flying to reach our destination, and though a part of me was wistful for the time Chet and I had spent adventuring together, I was certainly glad I didn't have to hike all this distance on foot. So, Peg said, her voice in my ear via a new, my new helmet, don't suppose you'd be willing to give us a few tips as we fly to improve our combat, make it like yours? That isn't the sort of thing a few tips can achieve, Peg, I said, but there are some formation exercises I could teach you while we fly. Excellent, Peg said. Over the next half hour, I explained to Cutlass Flight some basics that I thought they were lacking. The importance of a wingman, the value of drilling on formations, the purpose of group responses. I soon had them paired off, Maxim with Peg, the two residents together, and doing sprints. One would spring forward, fire their imp, then fall back to reignite while the other darted forward in a guard position. They took my instruction without complaint, and after a short time, I had a solid gauge of their abilities. Shiver was good. The Liz, not far behind her. Peg was better than she claimed, though her shuttle wasn't terribly fast. She was more a gunship and support flyer. Maxim wasn't great, but he was excited, so excited and eager, which counted for a lot. After the team sprints, I taught them some scatter formations, where the four would fly together, then break apart and weave through the air defensively before coming back into the same configuration. They picked that up quickly. Good, I told them. Now watch as I sketch this next formation on your monitors. I want you to do the same break and scatter, then return into a group of three. One of you is going to head back to fire at the enemy, who has hopefully been confused by your maneuvers. Fascinating, Shiver said. It's like shining with part of your body to distract while the rest of you grows in another direction. Yeah, or like a street fighting trick, I said. Give them to, get them to watch one hand while you prepare to claw their eyes out with the other one. Uh, Shiver said, you are a unique individual, Spin. Yeah, I know. Bless my stars, I said. Trust, just trust me. Learn to work as a group and you'll have a huge advantage on the battlefield. They did as I asked, slowly figuring out this more complex formation. I gave tips, digging back to what Cobb had taught me when I'd been new. You're good at this, Chet said from behind me as they ran through another scatter formation. I see a natural teacher in you. I'm good at pretending, I said. Most of this is just stuff I'm regurgitating for what I was taught. And what precisely do you think teaching is, hmm? 
he said. You have confidence, credibility, and empathy. I think you are excellent at this duty. I sat a little taller at those words, and the experience made me want to fall back into the role I'd taken with the team on Starsight, that of a drill master. That was dangerous. I wasn't going to be with the broadsiders long enough to train them extensively. I gave them a short break with a compliment on their skills, and Peg pulled up on my wing. Her shuttle looked slapped together, but that was deceptive. It held an exceptionally strong shield and powerful guns. In a proper fire team, with faster ships to keep the enemy from swarming her, she'd be a force to, re to be reckoned with. Though she was the leader, she'd done as I directed during instruction, without complaining or pulling rank. That said a lot about her, all of it good. She was humble enough to take direction in order to achieve her goals. How do you feel? She asked. Memories are good? They are, I said. I can remember my name, my friends, most of it. There's something about being part of a team that helps us all, she replied, even when we aren't immediately close to one another. It's like how a forest is stronger than a tree, eh? The roots interlock and the fruit grows for all in more abundance. It's like a crystal lattice, Peg, Shiver said over the comm. The structure of a crystal is strong because of how the individual atoms align. Well, Maxim said, I guess I'm supposed to say it's like a herd of cattle or maybe a line of fence posts or some other cowboy crap. Cowboy? I asked. He paused a moment when I spoke. Perhaps I was reading too much into it, but I felt he had to struggle not to snap at me because of how I'd betrayed his trust. He continued speaking, though, as if he were trying to give me a second chance. Haven't I told you, Spin? In the superiority, everyone thinks of humans as the ravening monsters, and so they love our old lore. Pirates, Gurkhas, the Tuskegee Airmen, and, unfortunately, cowboys. So they'd always expect me to talk like one, even though my heritage from old earth is Ukrainian. I don't know where that was. I don't know where that was, I admitted. It didn't have cowboys, Maxim said. You have no idea how annoying those hats are. My owners always claimed that they were using me for scientific study, but you wouldn't have known it from the way they showed me off at parties. Parties, Shiver said. Such an interesting concept. How you motiles insist you need time apart, yet when you, when you want to enjoy yourselves, you always simply come back together. Why leave in the first place? I have a friend, I said, thinking of Rig, who disagree that being together is when we enjoy ourselves. I think he has the most fun when everyone leaves him alone. Curious, curious, Shiver said, and Deliz added a hum in the background. I tried to picture their cavernous home world, like Detrius, only with each and every tunnel full of different crystalline tendrils, networks of individuals who explored by growing themselves outward. All right, I said over the comm. You have some travel time left. Do a, do a few more team sprints and prove you can execute them without making fools of yourselves. Maxim groaned. We just spent an hour on sprints. You still need to work on fundamentals, Maxim, I said. Learn what you can from me while I'm here. You people fly like a bunch of pig farmers. I take it pig farmers do not often fly well in your culture, Spin? Shiver asked. Ask Maxim, Peg said. He's the cowboy. I smiled, their banter reminding me of flying with my friends, though this felt different. In Skyward Flight, our banter, although genuine, had always had an edge. We'd been a few bold fighters facing overwhelming odds. We'd gone into each fight knowing it might be the one where we lost someone we loved. The broadsiders didn't have the same sense to them. They were relaxed as they ran through more sprints. When one got something wrong, they all laughed it off. Skyward Flight hadn't done that, because there, if one of us kept screwing up, it would get everyone killed. Was this what it felt like to relax? Scud. Listening to them, I realized I really didn't know what it felt like to just live without worrying about a bomb annihilating my entire civilization one night while I slept, without fearing that my friends wouldn't be coming home tomorrow, or, more recently, without wondering if I'd be discovered as an imposter. As they practiced, I glanced over the landscape. Once you got past the fact that this place could literally consume your memories and identity, it was beautiful. An endless open sky cast faintly pink violet, interrupted by floating islands. Each fragment was a different biome, <coughs> inviting a new adventure, and beyond that, the light burst. Though it was still distant today, though it was still distant, today I felt something drawing me toward it. Chet thought we'd need to go right up close to it to finish the Path of Elders, and looking into that full light now, I knew it was true. I'd walked the path, but at the end I'd faced them. Whatever else happened here, that was my destination. I shook myself out of that trance-like state and patched through on the comm to Peg, looking for a distraction. Hey, I said as she finished her sprints, can I get more details on your plan? How exactly is me fighting the pirate champion going to help you win, win the superiority base? She was quiet for a moment, seeming to consider. Finally, she answered, pulling her shuttle up beside my ship. You know about my past? The others told you? 
You were chief security officer at Sherhold, I said. The superiority treated you dirty, not allowing your kids to leave with you when your time was up. Correct, Peg said. So I grew a few hunchalls about that. I'll tell you, and I wasn't the only one. The base had been losing people for years. In fact, the factions hadn't grown yet, but there were plenty of smaller bands with a ship or two roving around out here. It was a big deal when you left, Chet said. Everyone heard about it. A high officer defecting, gathering all the dissidents, raiders, and wanderers to raise up a giant pirate armada. Yeah, well, Peg said, it wasn't enough. I failed back then, and my supposed giant armada shattered into the factions. Still, I've been thinking about it these last three years, considering what I did wrong, planning. I nodded thoughtful. Wasn't Shiver with you back at the base? Yeah, about a third of it would about a third of it defected when I did, Peg said. They formed the bulk of the pirates. Shiver's not the only broadsider who left with me. There are a bunch of us, like Rezed and Gunta. And I almost had more, almost got the entire base to up in revolt. Their failure to do so smacks of cowardice, Chet said. No, Peg said. No, that's not it. I understand them, Chet. They're not cowards. Just ordinary people trying to live in a difficult place. Back when I was security officer, I was the one who installed the non-lethal weapons on our ships. My argument being that we couldn't afford to throw away ships the malcontents had stolen. Truth is, though, I grew urechous. I knew those dissidents were just like us. I didn't want to be in the business of shooting them down. So wait, I said, you're saying that the superiority forces in here, they use non-lethal weapons too? Yep, Peg said, pretty much everyone does. We have this understanding. None of us want to be killing each other. So civilized, Chet said, I approve. Well, Peg said, the high ups in the somewhere, they'd rather it be deadly in here. Fortunately, they're far away. Regardless, Spin, this is important to me, or important to understand. Those people at Sherhold, they almost joined me when I left. They want to escape, but they're scared of the superiority and of the officers that are still loyal. If we give them a nudge, prove that my force is stronger, they'll join, they'll join us. I'm certain of it. That explained a lot. The pirates didn't want to lose equipment to damage because repairs were difficult to, for them. And the superiority forces weren't zealots or loyalists. They didn't want to die to defend a stupid mining base. But they had to make a good showing for their superiors. So non-lethal weapons were used all around. I found it interesting how humane things become when or became when once the people far up the command chain, the ones who didn't have to bleed for the decisions they made, couldn't force everyone into line. I don't understand why the pirates have these little squabbles and do meaningless raids against each other, though, I said. If I were in charge of one of these pirate factions, I wouldn't waste time with champions or duels. I'd raid a group smaller than mine, freeze their ships, then steal the lot of them. In a few weeks, I'd be queen of all the pirates. You really are terrifying sometimes, kid, Peg replied. A question occurred to me. Do you guys have, like, golden tankards or anything? I mean, I know we don't drink here, but I've always wanted a golden tankard. Or maybe one made out of the bone. Made out of bone. The story is mentioned once made from the skulls of one's enemies, but it seems like the drink would leak out the eye holes. Unless your enemies have no eyes, I guess. Hmm. Peg had fallen silent. Oh, maybe that last part had been a little much. I was trying to get better at this sort of thing. I should probably leave skulls out of conversations. I'm glad to finally meet a human who lives up to the stories, Peg said. But no, we're not going to be giving you any tankards made of skulls. Still, I said, Chet's right. It's remarkably civilized in here. I have trouble accepting that nobody has ruined it. That's because you spent your life fighting to the death, Peg said. We have a different problem. You feel yourself dribbling away each day, Chet agreed. Having something to do is important. The sparring, the duels, these invigorating activities give the pirates purpose, don't they? Yeah, Peg said, and no one wants to ruin what they have. That's part of the problem. Every time I pitch the idea of seizing Sherhold, the pirates get frightened, unnerved. They like the way things are. With six different pirate factions, there's always a raid to plan, a ship to repair, a mission to execute, or territory to defend. It's, it's what they want. But you want something more, I said. Yes, Peg admitted. Maybe I'm a little too much like you. A little too much like the people outside. I can't feel safe as long as the superiority is there. At any moment, they could send an enormous force through the portal and crush us with lethal weapons and swarms of drones. My people won't be safe in here until I control that portal, until I can lock it on our side, and then we can undermine superiority acclivity stone production, starve their forces on the other side, payback for what they did to me and mine. There is an encouraging vengefulness in her tone. I approved. The others were playing games, and Peg wanted to protect that, but she knew real danger, real killing. She still hadn't explained how the pirate champion related to all of this. 
but I let it die for now, because up ahead I saw our destination at last, a lonely fragment covered in ancient structures. It was time.